leaving my husband this morning, and I said, you know what? Georgia has a lot of patriots. They're going to come out because we didn't know if it would rain. And I said, you can always count on Georgia to have their patriots come out. So we're so glad to see you today. You know, this is my third time campaigning with Kelly. The first time I was campaigning, she had just been appointed, and I loved her story. It was a story of someone who grew up on a family farm, and I grew up where family farms were, and people who do that know hard work. She put her work through college, so she knows the value of a dollar. She went into a male-dominated business and was successful. She's tough. She's tough. So I loved her story. We came out, we campaigned. Then I came back the second time to Georgia, and it was right before the general election. And I didn't come because she had a great story. I came because she had a great record. She was one of our most conservative senators in the Senate. She supported our President Trump every step of the way. She's pro-life, pro-Second Amendment. She fought against defunding the police and cancel culture. And she stood up to China and had the president's back. So I know you're inundated with TV commercials and mail pieces and text messages. And I know everybody's told you that all eyes are on Georgia, and they truly are, and it feels like everybody's pockets are in Georgia, right, because all of the campaign money. But why does this matter so much? I want to tell you why it matters for me. Freedom, yes, thank you. I want to tell you why this matters to me. China is our number one national security threat. I went up against them every day. They want to dominate the world. They want to destroy America. And what I will tell you is, President Trump fought against China, put sanctions on China, and when they almost destroyed the world with this coronavirus, he shut down the airports, and he's getting us a safe and effective vaccine within a year, and Kelly Leffler stood by his side. In the Obama administration, they sent nearly two planes, they sent two planes of cash to Iran in hopes of if we pay them off, they'll stop their bad behavior. All they did was funnel money to the terrorist groups. President Trump came in, got out of the Iran deal, put sanctions on Iran, bringing them to their knees, took out Soleimani, and Kelly Leffler stood by him every step of the way. Now, President Trump gave us hundreds of judges. Great judges, great Supreme Court justices. How about Amy Coney Barrett? You know, I call her our minivan justice because she ran circles around the Senate. See, they didn't understand when you've got seven kids in carpool, that's nothing to her, right? Well, you can thank David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. They supported Amy Coney Barrett. So what else is at stake is the liberals feel like if they can't win by playing by the rules, they just want to change the rules, right? You know one of the first things they want to do? They want to make D.C. and Puerto Rico a state so that they can get more liberals in the Senate. Kelly Leffler and David Perdue are going to be our first line of defense to make sure that that doesn't happen. And not enough people are talking about 
What happens whether the Republicans win the Senate or the Democrats win the Senate? If the Republicans win the Senate, Lindsey Graham will be our budget chair. If the Democrats win the Senate, you're not ready, Bernie Sanders will be your Senate chair. That's why this matters. Ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Party is not your grandparents' Democratic Party. This is the Democratic Party that believes you cancel anyone that doesn't agree with you. They believe that you defund the police and stop taking care of those that serve us. They believe that socialism is the new way of life. And they think that you should put your lives and your health care in the hands of government. Now, we saw what happened when we lost the House. AOC and Pelosi are now running charge, right? They led the impeachment efforts, and they continue to say that they are going to bring socialism back to America where things can be better. But what we know is that we can't let that happen. Now, what do they want to do? Don't listen to me. Listen to them. Chuck Schumer says, first we take Georgia, then we change America. <laughs> AOC says, if we win the Senate, we don't have to negotiate with the Republicans anymore. <laughs> Georgia, that's why this matters. That's why it matters. It's why everyone in the country is looking at you. It's why everyone in the country is counting on you. And it's why everyone in the country will celebrate you when we win the races for David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. The whole world will celebrate. That's right. They'll celebrate our freedoms. They'll celebrate the fact that we can take the Senate and make sure that we stop bad things from happening. But this is what we need to do. You came out for a rally. Now I need you to vote. I know you're going to vote. I need you to contact your family members and make sure they vote. I need you to contact your friends and your church members and make sure they vote. They're not going to tell you, but some of them don't know how. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. Let them know, send out to your email list how to vote early, where to go, what to do, what they need to have. And ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to celebrating with all of you in Georgia January 5th when we bring David Perdue and Kelly Leffler back to the Senate. Give it up for Kelly! right here in Georgia, all eyes in America, around the world, are on you, on us. We're in this together because we're the firewall to socialism. This is not an exaggeration. You know what's happening, and you just heard Nikki Haley tell you exactly what's going on. Now we take Georgia, then we change America. No, that's not happening here because we do not want your socialized medicine, your Green New Deal, your high taxes, your socialism, your Marxism. We are fighting for you, Georgia. I know you're fighting for us. Look, this is the battleground for the future of the country right here. I mean, look, look where we are right now. I mean, this is the masters of politics right here. So look, we are going to make this happen. And I talk to folks across the country every day, and they say, Kelly, please tell me Georgia is going to get this done. And I look out at all these great patriots here, and I tell them, we are going to get it done. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look, I am asking you to stay in the fight with us. President Trump is asking you to stay in the fight with us. He's coming back to Georgia. He was here a couple weeks ago. That's right. So I talked to the president a couple days ago, and he loves Georgia, and he knows we're going to get it done. I told him, we, that's right, we are fighting for this president. He fought for us. We're fighting for him. We're going to get this done. That's right. But, you know.
know, we have a battle on our hands. Make no mistake, we are in the fight of our lives right here because it's not just radical ideas. It's radical candidates. You know the candidate that I'm running against, uh, radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Yeah. And, and you, you don't have to take my word for it. You can hear him in his own words. He has called police officers gangsters, thugs, bullies, and a threat to our children. He has said we should open up the prisons and let everyone out. We should eliminate cash bail. Well, I say God bless our men and women of law enforcement. We will always have their back. That's right. That's right. We're, we're not going to stand for this defund the police business. You know that they would be in the front row. John Ossoff, the socialist trust fund child, and, uh, and Raphael Warnock, they would be in the front row of defunding the police. That is not right for Georgia. It's not right for America. We have to stop that movement right here. But there's more. That's right. There is more. Okay, so in our debate, I asked him, would he denounce Marxism and socialism? He refused to do it. You know why? Because he believes in it. He wrote a book celebrating Marxism a hundred times. He invited Castro into his church. He celebrated anti-Semite, anti-American, Jeremiah Wright, the guy that condemned America. Well, I say God bless America and God bless Donald J. Trump. That's right. That's right. And, you know... Those are his words. He's also said that he would support high taxes on hardworking Georgians right off the bat, $2,000 a family. Look, we are going to stand up against their radical agenda to grow the government, to put your health care in government hands, to have the Green New Deal, to have open borders, pack the court, D.C. statehood. None of that's right for us here in Georgia, and we're on the front lines against all of that. But listen, David Perdue and I are working hard to make sure that we bring real results to Georgia. That's why we had a calling to serve you in Washington. Look, I work for you. I went to Washington to take Georgia to Washington. I promise never to bring Washington to Georgia. You don't want it here. You don't want it here. No, we don't need the swamp. We don't want the swamp. You know, uh, but there's more. We need to get past this pandemic, deliver the relief that Democrats have blocked months and months, stopping small businesses, stopping families, schools, hospitals from getting more relief. We have to hold the Democrats accountable for playing politics with our families, our communities, our small businesses, and we need to make sure that we get that done because we even have more work to do. Look, David and I are job creators. We spent decades in the private sector. I went from being a job seeker, moving off the farm to build a business career, to creating jobs right here in Georgia. That's what will bring us together. That's what will get this country back on its feet. We need more of that, not these political games. We need better health care. Look, Obamacare has driven 130,000 Georgians off of their health insurance because they can't afford it. That doesn't protect pre-existing conditions when you can't afford it. We have to protect pre-existing conditions, make it more affordable, and make it more accessible. That's what David and I are going to do. That's right. You know, and, and we also know that the Democrats know the fastest way to radicalize our kids is in their schools. That's why school choice is so important. We have to fight for school choice. The Democrats would eliminate school choice. That's not right. Look, I went to public school, state university. I know that education can lift everyone up. That's what I want. We're going to keep fighting to make sure schools have the right incentives to give kids a great education. But we also have to stand up for our conservative values. We can never lose sight of this. That's what's happening in Washington. I see it every week I'm up there. We're fighting back every single day. We're standing up to protect innocent life. The radical agenda of the left, the abortion on demand, the taxpayer funding of abortion they want, we have to stop that. That's not right. The Second Amendment's under a tax. They want to track, tax, and confiscate our guns. We're not going to let that happen here either. Nope. So there's a lot of work to do. We have to make sure they don't pack the court, D.C. statehood, all of that. But I have, since day one, stood up to the left-wing media, the fake news, big tech, 
China, the cancel culture. So you can see we have our work cut out for us. David and I are excited to get back up there. But here's what we need you to do in order to get there. If you're our voice on January 5th, we will be your conservative voice in Washington for years to come. Because thank you. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. So here's how we get it done. We're practical people. Like We just want common sense solutions. How do we do it? We get out to vote. Like Nikki said, get your friends and family. Get your folks at church out to vote. Get some people you don't even like out to vote. It's okay. You know, they can vote for us too. And we welcome that because we need everyone to turn out to vote, to save America. That's what this is about. It's the future of our country. We are going to show President Trump, we're going to show the world that Georgia is a red state. I know we're going to do that. That's right. But we have to vote. Early voting is open right now. You can head over to the polls all week. We can get out and vote, except Christmas Day. Um, and let's celebrate and, and then get out to vote and make sure that we do that. And we have that till the end of the month. It's vitally important that your voice is heard. We're working hard to make sure this is a free fair election where only legal votes count. That's right. We have, we have stood up every resource. We have thousands of poll watchers. We have tons of legal resources. We are making sure that you know your vo voice will be heard by January 5th, if not sooner. So we need you to get out and vote. And please, you know, my good friend Marsha Blackburn, senator from Tennessee, told me. Yeah, let's hear from Marsha. She's a good woman. She, she says, you know, call your friends and family. Make it a list. Five a day until voting's over. Just five a day. Because five calls or texts a day will keep the liberals away. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just remember, it's just, you know... After you say your morning prayers, you know, you can just do those five texts and get that done. So, look, we're counting on you because I know together we're going to show the world that Georgia's a red state. Together we're going to stop socialism right here in Georgia. Together we are going to save America. Thank you all. Thank you so much.